Hey, what's up everyone? If you are still hunting, if your state still has a hunting season going on, best of luck to you. For the rest of us, it's the off season and this is the time when we revamp our gear, we shop around for things that are gonna make us a little bit better heading into the next season. All right, so what I wanna cover in this video are a few things that I missed on the first review. If you haven't gotten to check that out, I'll include an end screen at the conclusion of this video. You can click that, go back and watch it for more of the fine details. This is really just going to be, you know, things here and there that I've gotten questions about that I didn't cover in the first video. All right, so let's talk about sizing. First of all, I'll flash this up on the screen, but Tethered includes a sizing guide to point you in the right direction in case you're unsure of which size to actually get. I would say if you're on the cusp of going up a size or on the cusp of going down a size, I would opt for the bigger size. So don't worry that it's going to be like a parachute and that it's going to be too big. I don't think that the size variation is really differing a whole lot. Even for my saddle, which is supposed to cover up to a certain amount and I was worried that it wasn't going to stretch out enough. Uh, I'm a 46 inch waist and I think it goes out to like 52 inches. So there's a lot of adjustment in that actual belt and you can really crank that thing down. If you're worried that the saddle's gonna sag a lot, a lot of that has to do with just how much weight you have in your cis haulers or around your waist. So if you've got a, you know, steel carabiners and you've got really heavy tethers and lineman ropes and you've got a bunch of junk in your sys hauler it's really going to sag that down and it's going to be hard for that belt that comes with the saddle to uh, hold that up so just keep that in mind don't freak out too much about the size you'll be okay if you get a little bit bigger that's fine just remember that when you're wearing things like winter clothes you know you've got a lot of extra um, space to account for uh, and then if it's a little bit bigger it's it's not going to make much of a difference all right, so let's talk about noise. With the Tethered Mantis or the Phantom, any of those mesh type saddles, it's going to be a lot different experience than with the Cordura Menace. So like this jacket, you can kind of hear that material making noise. The Tethered Menace is going to be the same. So when you're walking in, you will hear a little bit of, and it's not going to be that dramatic. I think that's just because it's, it's rubbing together like this, but on my actual body, Really what I, what I hear most of the time is just, and, that, and that's if I'm really walking fast. So there are trade-offs in everything with this saddle. Because of that Cordura material, you're going to get a lot more comfort, a lot more pressure back on you and a lot more even pressure, but it's also going to come with a little bit of noise. Now, I think as time goes on, as you kind of wear this thing in, I think it'll, it'll lose some of that crisp noise. If you're going less than 100 yards from your truck to the tree that you picked out, I don't re recommend packing this saddle in. I would say just wear it and then get up the tree and go on about your hunt. But if you are going more than half a mile and you do want to pack this in, I would recommend the Trophy Line CAYS pack. I'm not an ambassador for them. I do think their product is really good. It is a little bit on the pricey side, but it's well worth it. I know it's gonna last for a long time. You can store your saddle in there. You can store a jacket, a couple bottles of water, all of your camera gear, and then also your platform and your climbing sticks. You can throw all that on your back and then just go on about your way and it's gonna be really comfortable. When I get home, I typically will keep it in that pack and just hang it up. Now, you don't have to do that. I know that you're just not supposed to store saddles wet. And sometimes I worry about moths or you know, bugs chewing away at fabrics. And this is a really expensive saddle and I want to maintain it. So I keep it stored away in, in the pack that I actually hunt with. All right, so let's talk about comfort adjustments. Somehow in the first video, I completely missed over that. I just focused on the bridge length, how changing that kind of alleviates some of the pressure on your sides and can circumvent your gut. You know, having a longer bridge is a good thing. You can also change your tether height. So the higher you go, the more you're gonna feel like you're gonna swing. 
the more you're gonna feel like you're supported by the actual saddle. And the lower your tether, the more you're gonna feel like you're supported by your platform or your freestanding. Now, one of the big features of the saddle is this comfort adjustment. So this pulls down and this is the bottom of the saddle. What that's going to do is pull this bottom up and it's going to feel like it's cupping your legs a little bit more. So if you're a stander or a leaner, it's not really a big selling point. Now, if you sit, that is really going to help aid your comfort. It's going to feel more like a chair and you're really going to be able to lean back and feel like a lot of your body is in the saddle. So I can't believe I missed it, but that is a huge selling point. If you're a sitter, especially, you'll love the comfort adjustments right there. All right, so let's talk about modifications that you might wanna to do to improve your saddle or to make it just a little bit more comfortable. Right out of the factory, this thing is ready to go. You really don't need anything. But if you want to add some things, here's what I would add. First thing we covered in the first video is the adjustable bridge from Cruiser Saddles. I will never not have one of these on any saddle that I use. I don't care how good the bridge is or you know what length it is, I will always have an adjustable bridge. It just makes the most sense, it's the most comfortable, and I love the ability to change on the fly. So I would recommend that highly. I'll include a link in the description if you wanna go check that out. The next thing is a sys hauler. These are about 15 bucks. They're sold right on Tethered's website. These attach through the molly loops on this saddle. I keep my tether in there. I keep my, my gear hanger. And then I also keep my pull-up rope. This is Dynaglide from Eastern Woods Outdoors. Stores on the side. It's really nice, convenient. I try not to weigh it down too much because it does make me feel like my pants are sagging. So try to keep it a little bit light. Don't pack it to the brim. You know, put a lot of that stuff in my backpack that's really heavy. And I'm always going to have a backpack for, you know, climbing sticks and camera gear and water and things like that. So I would not weigh it down too much. Okay, and the last thing that I would do, and I actually don't have it, I have a different type of holster, but I would add a holster that's shown above here. You can get these at Eastern Woods Outdoors. They're about 25 bucks and it'll attach right to these molly straps. Now, I conceal carry every time I go to the stand and that's just because I hunted an area with a lot of hogs. And if I run into them, I feel a lot more comfortable taking a shot if they're running or they were ever running towards me, I would feel a lot more comfortable taking a shot with my pistol. And if you conceal carry with an inside the waistband type holster and your saddle sits over that, it's going to press against your, your body and it's gonna create a lot of pressure, especially when you sit, sit down in your saddle. So, I would get a holster that mounts to the outside in a pouch, it's out of the way, it's not going to cause additional pressure, and you can still have your gun on you in case you want to take a shot at a hog, or if it's firearm season and you want to take a shot at a deer or another animal with your gun, you can do that. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you got value out of this content, go ahead and give it a like below. If there's anything that I missed or anything you want me to expound on, let me know in the comment section below. For those of you still hunting, best of luck. For the rest of us, good luck this upcoming season.